views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Caitlin Russell. Welcome to the Healing Light Podcast. I am a psychic intuitive who's been reading tarot cards for over 25 years. I'm also Reiki certified. Join me as I read cards, share intuitive messages, promote healing, and much, much more. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Caitlin from the Healing Light Podcast. I am your host. Uh, before I get to my wonderful guest, I wanted to thank you all for listening. I want to say a big thank you to the Paranormal Buzz radio team. This is Shay, Deb, Allison, and Rebecca. I also want to say thank you to Spreaker for having me. The Healing Light Podcast can be found on Spreaker, Amazon Prime, Spotify, iHeartRadio, many, many more. Soon, Apple. So Apple will be to come. Uh, There's new episodes that drop uh, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, of course, I always thank my listeners because without you, I don't have a show. And I'm always open to show ideas. So send those to me or the guests you want to hear from, you can either message me on my social media or email me at uh, the the healing light one. That's the healing light number one at gmail.com. And same thing if you want to be a guest, message me on my social media accounts or send me an email. So as far as my social media accounts go, I am on Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X as the Healing Light NH, and thank you for supporting me. Now, I, I'm, I'm very excited. This is a first for me. My guest tonight is a totally badass woman, my friend Brenda of Gen X Creations. And what I want to talk about, and this is what the Healing Light is all about, is uh, healing you know, talk about recovering and how we do all that. And so I, I know that Brenda, you know, has really worked really hard on herself to be where she is today. So I wanted us to talk about uh, healing, surviving, and also thriving after a divorce or uh, a breakup. Or, or even, you know, if you uh, are unfortunately a, a widow, uh, then, you know, how do you survive that as well? So welcome, Brenda, to the Healing Light Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this topic. I've been wanting to cover this for a while. So I wanted to kind of dive into it. I've had, I've gone through a few (laughs) breakups (laughs) Um, and I survived them, I'm happy to say, but it was a really rough period in my life. And I realized how much I changed from those, the past to the present. So let's start off with you. I mean, how do you feel when you were the younger of you in relationships or married and then where you are now and, you know, kind of take us through briefly uh, your past and your divorce and how you feel where you are now? Sure. Um, so this is my second divorce. A lot of people don't know that. Um, I was married very young at 19 and, um, divorced by the age of 24, I would say. Um, unfortunately it was, you know, a lot of domestic violence and, um, I had my daughter when I was 19, almost 20. So I had to think of her and, um, leave that relationship and that relationship, um, really set forth uh, 
so much how can I put so much negativity within myself as a person, as a mom, as a woman, you know, um, I, it took me many, many years to heal. Um, mm. Today I can finally talk about things and be honest about things and it doesn't affect me, but it took me a very long time uh, to heal from those things because I never grew up that way. My mom and dad were married for 33 years. They never so much as shouted at each other you know, so nobody put hands on my mom. You know what I mean? So mm. it was very hard for me to um, understand why it was happening. I guess that's the younger version of me. Why is this happening when I didn't grow up that way? I didn't see these things. Mm. Um, lots of sorries, lots of tears, mm. you know, and I kept taking that person back because for better or for worse, right? That's what I was taught in a uh, Latina Catholic household. You're married for better or for worse. You stick with that person. Um, fast forward, I, you know, I finally, after five, six years, divorce, left, and things like that. Now I'm a single mom, raising my daughter, working two jobs, um, trying to just be on my feet. And um, I dated here and there, dated my son's father, and um, never got married or anything. That was just very uh, back and forth, back and forth, you know, and mm -hmm. left that relationship. Uh, I finally came out very late in life. Mm. So when I came out, I was with my son's father. And um, I had to finally tell myself, this is why you're so miserable. This is why you keep choosing the wrong people because you, you're you not yourself. You're not being true to who you are. So I finally came mm. out late in life and things like that. And, and I've been the happiest I've ever been um, because I'm being true to myself. I met my ex-wife now. Uh, we spent 13 years together. Mm. And I think going back and looking at it now, if I could do things differently, I wouldn't have married this person. Mm. Um, I think we just got into things way too fast. Yeah, okay. You know, and, um, you know, you do things spontaneously because you love that person and you think you're in love with that person and, you know, just happens i believe she was meant to be in my life for a period and i was meant to be in her life for a period of time and mm -hmm. our time ended um but there was a lot of um trauma mm. that, that she recreated after i tried to heal for so long she brought yeah. all that ptsd back to me um the one thing that i've learned and it's very hard because i don't trust people so if i trust you enough to tell you something about my past I'm hoping that you would never say it or that you would never um, try to make something feel like that part of my trauma, you know, or, or bring it up or anything like that to me. And and she did that a lot. Mm. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, she did that a lot. So wow, that's, wow. It wasn't, it wasn't a good divorce. It wasn't, it was very hard. I let go when I, when I stopped feeling for somebody, I check out completely. Mm. When you say I'm done, there's nothing that person can do. I'm done. And um, I think she had a very hard time with that, you know? Yeah. Um, but it finally happened and things like that. And we finally got divorced. Um, during my divorce process, I met my fiance now. So I met her. I started my divorce in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, I should have left in 2017 because that's when I kind of felt the love fading. But you always want to make things work for whatever reason, you know? Yeah. For me personally, I think if, if I would have let it go that early, I would have felt like I just filled another marriage, you know? Uh, so I, I guess I didn't want to do that. So I, I tried to make it work. Um, but anyway, in 2020, that's when I asked for the divorce. Um, we were already basically living separate lives, kind of like, you know, it's like roommates. Um, I was working from home. 2021 is when I met my fiance. And um, I wasn't looking. I was like, I'm going to stay single and I'm going <laughs> to I'm not moving in with anybody. I'm not doing nothing. I don't want nothing to do with that. And, uh, you know, she came along and she was a friend and um, she knew my situation. And I was always honest with her. I never lied to her about anything. And she, she really took the chance and stuck around because sometimes when you're saying that you're getting a divorce, but you still live with your ex, a lot of times you get back together, 
you know, or things happen. And so yeah, yeah. you as the other person on the other on the outside, you're taking a risk by being with this person, but I never lied to her. So um, fast forward to now, we live together, we are engaged. Um, I'm happier than I've ever been. She's an amazing, amazing soul. Um, she has really worked hard and been very consistent in showing me that she loves me every day, that I can trust her, that I'm not my past. You know, we don't, we have adult conversations. Our communication is top tier. Um, nice. That's something I didn't really have in my past relationships. Mm. You know, um, we have uncomfortable conversations, you know, and, um, and that's a beautiful thing to have. We don't judge each other. She doesn't judge my past. I don't judge hers because that was the past, you know? So um, this time around, we're taking it slow. You know, a lot of people think, oh my God, you just got divorced and you're already engaged. You know, we, we've been, she's been here for a few years um, and yeah. we're taking it slow and um, just day by day, but. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Congratulations. You, I'm so you. happy for you. You know, I can, I can so relate. And I'm sure a lot of, uh, a lot of other women can, you know, you're young. Uh, mm -hmm. When I met my long-term uh, partner, ex, you know, she's my ex, um, I was, I was 24 years old, <laughs> wow. you know, and what did we know back then, Brenda? We didn't know. I mean, my exposure was uh, toxic parents, my, you know, when I was, it was a lot of emotional, a verbal abuse with me. So I had trauma from that. So what did I know? What a relationship was? What What did I know about love and respect? No, you, on the other hand, your parents, here they are, loving, caring for each other. 30, 33 years together, you know, over 30 years together. So your expectations are, this is how, you know, I'm going to be, and I just, I, I would think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're just so young and inexperienced and expecting something different that maybe you, you miss those, those red flags that were there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to say to people, when they say miss, missing red flags, that is not a fault. Nothing that happened to you is your is your fault you know when especially when it comes to uh abuse any type of any type of uh abuse right. um you know it's not your fault you know that's the other person so be kind to yourself on that end so when you when you realized that um you know you had your first marriage and you were you were so young and it had the uh, abuse in it and then you you know you do your same thing um you know being single all that and then when you and which just reminds me the same thing i i uh you know before i, I met my wife i was like okay i'm done <laughs> i can be single forever and nobody has to i can do whatever i want <laughs> um yeah. you know i can do whatever i want say what i want you know, I pay me own, my own bills, uh, you know, all that. But when you think about, you know, what I what I heard from you is I, I, I should have left her sooner. And I thought the same thing. I was with my ex for 14 years, 14 years. Wow. And really, we should have been broken up like within six months, honestly. And, you know. I just, I'm, you might already know this, and I'm not trying to tell you something you don't already know, but, you know, we just, we don't know until we know, you know, and, and I, I am, I am absolutely, absolutely hate when people things ha they happen, they, things happen for a reason. Do not tell me that bullshit, because that is not true. However, when something traumatic happens to you and you tell me if I'm if you agree you learn from it you grow from it and it makes you more empathetic 
makes you kinder, smarter. I think it, it's made me smarter, you know, and especially as you get older. Right. Would, it, would you agree? So I have stages, right? Um, I think that for me, yes, you, you, I have grown. I have grown a lot. I am, but I am less empathetic because my wall, and I'll tell you why, because my wall went up for such a long time after my first marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And anybody that came in and tried what, no, there was just this big wall. Um, Then comes my ex-wife and she kind of made it okay for me to break down that wall. And Mm -hmm. so I learned to trust again. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and I never got therapy. Mm. Um, So that I feel like that was a big part of why I couldn't. Not that you let go because, right, trauma is trauma and and that sticks with you forever. But you try to move on from it and, and like you said, and learn from it and be better for yourself, for your mental health, for you, for whoever's with you. And I never got that. So my therapy was going to the beach. Mm. Didn't matter what kind of weather it was. I would go to the beach and I would have a journal in hand and I would cry and scream and write and just write and write and write and write. Yeah. And yeah. So that was my therapy. Mm. Um, and that helped me a lot, you know, deal yeah. with things. So uh, it didn't, this time around, this last relationship, when I kind of was, when it was made okay for me to kind of break down my walls and I, I expressed all my, my trauma and all these things that happened. And this person assured me that they would protect me. And not that I need that. Cause I'm very like, mm-hmm. I'm an owl. <laughs> so, you know, I'm very like a control freak. Like you don't need to do things for me. It's okay. I got this. Like I, you know, yep. and um, so she, again, she, she tried to, you know, make me trust her and make me believe that, you know, everything was fine. She would never judge me. But then I saw little things here and there that I was like, hmm. And they were not red completely, maybe dark pink going into the red flag. You know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. And yeah. I was like, let me nip that in the bud real quick. And so we would have these conversations about what I didn't like. And then she would hear me and leave it alone. So to me, that was okay because she's listening to me and she's not letting things happen again, right? And later on in the years, it just started happening more and more and more. And I was like, okay, your insecurities need to stop. You need to stop throwing in my past. Because, you know, it was just, it got very, hands were never laid on me one time. But that's another conversation. Um, but it was more emotional. Right. It was That's, more verbal. Right. Yeah. That but, was it. You know, um, I've never been physically abused by in a relationship, thank God, but definitely emotionally and verbally. And the way I feel, um, but I can speak to when I was a kid, you know, I was, you know, physically abused and mentally and verbally. That to me, that emotional abuse and verbal abuse even digs deeper. It it really is very cruel to your your soul, Uh, you know, because physical is bad, absolutely. But wounds heal. Um, You know, it's very hard with the brain to have that that healing. That's why I always say, you know, it's a lifelong price process. Will I ever... Will we ever be 100%? No. But like you said, can we move forward from where we were? Absolutely. Right. You know, I mean, it took me years and it took you years. I mean, um, we'll get to your your business in a minute. But, you know, we're both Gen Xers. And also you have to remember, too, we're from that generation uh, of, you know, we were left on our own. We were like feral kids. Yeah. No, you, there is, you know, you got a a straight knee, go rub some dirt on it. (laughs) 
know, you're you're like, walk it off. <laughs> walk it off, yeah. You don't cry. You go upstairs, uh, wipe it, go back outside, get yeah. another sleep. <laughs> like, right, yeah. well, why are you Why are you snap, stop, snap out of it? You know, I get, I get told to snap out of it. You know, so I think that that plays into it as well. And, you know, it just does all that psychological damage. And I hear you about being in control. You know, you want to, that's part of um, trauma as well. Yeah. We need to be in, because in our other situations, we had no control, you know? Right. And I, I feel, and I'm sure you do too, that it's, you know, bad breakups are, are bad breakups as well. When you're married, there is something like I got I got married in, in February. Right. Very happy happily, but you know, so so I'm not you know, I'm not really that far into it. But you know, I, I would I think to me when you marry someone, it just feels different than calling someone your boyfriend or girlfriend or even your fiance it is marriage and that is a legal document but it's also like okay we are a unit now you know and when you divorce if i'm understanding you correctly or or, or tell me if i'm if you feel the same way you know, that is like a huge, oh, my God, I feel like a failure because we're married. You know what I mean? Now we have the divorce. And there's so much stigma over divorce to this day. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people, especially in our generation, they, I know a lot of people in our generation that have been with their partners for over 10, 15 years, and they are getting divorced and or separated or whatever and I think you just come to a point like you said earlier um you know when when you're done you just know when you're done like you know it's not just one little thing it could be a lot of things that just you can't do it anymore or it could just be one day you just wake up and you're like I don't I'm not in love with this person like what am I doing like I I don't want to waste that person's time and I don't want to waste my time because life is too you know and so I I wish I would have done it sooner because I feel like I wasted both of our time. You know, right. she could have been doing something else. I could have been doing yeah, something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear yeah, you on we were, that. Absolutely. Yeah. We were going um, our, our separate ways. So, but, you know, right. lesson learned. And now it's my fiance now. She's very patient and she gives me my space when needed. And she lets me know that it's okay to still be angry over my past, but don't hold on to it because then that, um, I am sabotaging myself, my relationship, and my future. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you go from being with someone for years and years and years. You're an established unit. You know, you both have mutual friends together. You know, you might you might still be in contact with with her family. You know what I mean? And how did you how did you uh, cope with that? Like. The whole, okay, now we're together. Now we're apart. I mean, do you, did you have in mutual friends uh, and family that you still, like, you had nothing wrong with, say, an aunt or an uncle? Now you're divorced. Um, so, I never met any of her friends. Oh, okay. You met all of mine. Uh, she was based out of New York, and she moved to Boston to be with me. So she met all of my friends. Um, so wherever I went, you know, she went, unless I went on, like, on a girl's trip or something like that. Um, and I always used to tell her, make friends. Like, it's so important for you to have your own personality, be your own person, because you just never know. And maybe I was already calling it out, and I just didn't notice that I was calling it out. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Because I was like, you know, if something happens between us, then you don't have anybody to turn to because my friends are your friends. You know what I mean? And kind of sometimes they get do get biased and they're like, well, you know, we've known her first or whatever. Um, and, but she never did. She, she never did. Um, so that was kind of hard because when the divorce started, mind you, um, 
you know me, I'm a very private person. I don't put none of my personal business out on social media because it's my business. Right. So when we first divorced, she decided that she wanted to put it out there on social media. Oh, jeez, Louise. So oh. She it, yeah, so she put it on Instagram. And kind of, uh, I the people closest to me were the ones that already kind of knew what was going on. And then, of course, you know, people that are seeing it on, on social media are like calling me up or texting me and is this true and blah, blah, blah. And it's, and it was like, what are you, what are you doing? So I don't know if she did it out of spite, anger. I have no idea. But um, it, it was definitely not easy. And I lost a few friends uh, because I don't know if sometimes people just don't want to get in it. And that's fine. I, I'm not, I would never ask anybody to choose ever or pick sides. I, I would never. But in the same token, if you've known me way longer first, before I even had this person as a unit as a partner and now you stop talking to me but you're kind of believing what they're saying without at least reaching out to me and be like hey what's really going on you yeah. know so i had a few people like that that i thought were really close friends and they did that and i was like you know what i need to just stay yeah. to myself you know uh yeah full disclosure um you know brenda you and i have known each other we met through mutual friends and i i i known you and your ex for years and I had no idea what was going on, you know, with your marriage, no clue. Uh, but, and I, you know, I was, your ex and I were, were friends on social media. But when I, when I heard, when you told me, and I would actually see some of those videos. And I remember you telling, I think I, I think I told you about that. And, I, and you tell me, you know what the real deal was? And I was like, done. Okay, I am done. You know, uh, so I just wanted to put full disclosure out there. But uh, I have blocked this this person and I have nothing to do with them anymore. So, um, you know, you're, you and I, I'm, I'm so glad we maintained a friendship out of this. So, uh, you know, so here you are. Now, you know, you're at the point where, okay, the divorce is done. Now, where do you go from here? So how do you climb out of that? How do you rebuild from really you just, I mean, you're, you're starting over with nothing. And how do you rebuild your life? And, you know, I want you to talk too about, we'll get to Gen X creations in a minute, but how do you climb up from that? What did you do? Um, it has not been easy until today, you know, um, I thought that I was never going to get out of that relationship. Uh, you know, we, we bought a house together. So the good thing about having that house is that the basement was my office. I worked from home. The basement was my office and my business, Gen X Creations. Um, so whenever I needed to get away, I would just go downstairs. I had my space. She would come downstairs. I'd be like, give me my space. I just need to be away from you, like, you know, I, my, for my sanity. So it was very, very hard. I honestly did not think many times that I was ever going to get out of there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the abuse continued. Um, I have like a year and a half's recording worth uh, on my phone of just, you know, the things that she would say and how she would try to put me down and make me feel a certain way. And, you know, and it's just like, dude, there's no love. Mm -hmm. Learn from it, accept it, and let it go. Yeah. You know? Uh, great. So, but... I'm still rebuilding, you know, but mm -hmm. my mindset is different. I'm more a more positive person, and I know that, you know, I'm going to get to where I, I want to be soon. Just got to keep working. Okay. All right. So um, what would be your best word of advice or advisement message to women who are going through a similar experience? You know, they've gone through a bad marriage, a bad you know, engagement, whatever, bad breakup. Uh, and where do they go, you know, from here? What would, what, what would you like to give them not for advice, but guidance, inspiration? Um, I would say the biggest thing is to never shut out your, your close circle because you need that support. You okay. really need that support. So really okay. find out who your true, true friends are because when things happen, you're really going to need them there. Um, mm -hmm. And be brave. Just the first sign of a red flag, 
get out. Just get out. You have to be brave. That's the biggest thing. I l allowed people to kind of dim my light and mm. um, make me believe that I was someone that I, I really wasn't. Mm. And yeah. so I didn't have my, for my first relationship, I didn't have my close friends because he made me shut everybody out. So nobody ever knew. Um, for this one, I my best friends were my rock for sure, but they always yeah. left it up to me to decide what I was going to do. They never told me to leave. They never, they were just like, we want you safe. We want to make sure that you're happy. So that's what you need. You need that good support system in, in your, on your side, because that makes everything much easier. Whether you leave the relationship or not, just having someone to listen to you and to not judge you and just, just be an ear, you know? Um, when you need to vent, that's very important. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think people need to, people definitely, women need to, need, women need to hear that. Absolutely. So let's end on a happier note. Tell me all about Gen X Creations. <laughs> what is it? What do you, what do you do? And all that. So I started uh, my small business, Gen X Creations, during COVID. Um, and I went around so many different names for my business. Um, I started painting. So I do acrylic paints. I do pours. I um, try to do portraits. You know, I, in high school, I took fashion. And in college, I took fashion. So I love oh, anything. I did not know that. Okay, yeah. cool. And so I started with that. And then I was like, you know what? I want to do something else. Like, I love sayings on T-shirts and cups. And I, I just love all that stuff. So I started YouTubing a lot of things and investing money on things and I paint, I make t-shirts, hoodies, uh, tumblers, you name it, I make it. Um, I will create, you know, anything that you want me to create or I will do my own thing. And it's been kind of hard, you know, because you don't, when you move to a different place, like you don't know anybody. So it's like, word of mouth is harder here when you don't know anybody, yeah, yeah. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. Home, you know? So, but I'm still trying, you know, I'm not going to give that up. That's my passion. I love it. Um, I'm hoping in the future to have my own little store so that I can have ah. all my stuff. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's very so, cool. I'm very proud of you. Very happy for you. you. Thank you. Now, um, and actually you and I will message each other because I, I think I might need you to make something for me. I just came up with this idea, but we'll oh. talk afterwards. <laughs> all right. So if someone wants to check out, your your art, your cups, your shirts, everything. How do they reach you? So right now I'm still building my website. So uh, you can go on to uh, Gen X Creations and Instagram. It's G and underscore X underscore creations on Instagram. You can DM me there. Um, I'm also on TikTok and I have my email address on TikTok as well. So I try to do a little bit of both, but I'm definitely working on my website. Excellent. I am I am huge, huge. I can't even tell you on supporting women owned business, my minority owned business, LGBTQ business, uh, black owned businesses, etc. <laughs> so yeah. I want everyone of my listeners out there to go check out Brenda's products and her art and support her. So uh, thank you very much, Brenda, for sharing your story and getting it out there. I know it'll resonate with a lot of women, you know, yeah. I think, I, I I believe, not think, I know that a lot of us who've been through what you and I have been through, there's there's so many thousands of stories that, that are the same. So know that you are not alone. There's help available. Like Brenda said, you know, rely on your, I call it my circle of support, my chosen family. I'm in therapy. Uh, I'm with the right psychiatrist, you know, and Brenda, you have a world of support with your wonderful fiance. Yeah. Um, so that's it. So uh, I want to thank everyone for listening in tonight. And once again, my name is Caitlin Greenglass with the Healing Light Podcast uh, on Spreaker or really anywhere you get your listen to your podcasts. And I am every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, thank you for listening, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye. Bye.